finally got the battery open, stripped and nearly empty. So here we have what you ha what is a Tesla battery pack. Each of these rectangular holes is where you would have on the 75 kilowatt and 85 kilowatt battery a 5 kilowatt slab of 18650s. Um, and they're wired in a funny way. This is negative, zero, so it comes down to one of these. So you go zero or zero uh, negative connector through a contactor. That's two contactors nicely hidden under a insulated cover there. Into here, I think, one of these two. Up to here, so that's zero. So then you get to plus 25 volts and you go across to this one and then you go to here, so that's now plus 50 volts more or less. And then diagonally up to here, through this one, across, up and so on, jing, 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 jing. And so unlike the Nissan Leaf, there isn't a break in the middle of this pack. If you take the fuse out, which you get to from underneath here, you have broken the circuit, but the battery is still 350 volts. So you still have a possibility of doing not an easy short, but you know, a short of 350 volts. Whereas the leaf pack is very nice in that you break it and you've got two 175 volt packs. Now, this one was only a 75 kilowatt hour pack. So all of those down there were full. In the 85 kilowatt hour pack, this lump here would also have had two modules in it. Um, so that 100 kilowatt hour over there, I think will be the same architecture as this, but we haven't taken it apart. So that's the, where the slabs go. So I've handled where the power comes through. Now the other side to this beautiful, I mean, this is a work of art. I should have started by enthusing. I'm really, really impressed by this battery. I will say it again, I will say it until the cows come home. I am really unimpressed by Tesla's customer service and the way it treats people who want to actually work on their vehicles or show an interest in their vehicles beyond just spending money and driving them. But I'm really impressed with their engineering. So here we have the coolant, the, the thing the Nissan Leaf very much lacks and I think suffers because of it. So these are quick release. So when you put the battery up as was demonstrated a few years ago that they could do a quick change. They just pop in and then you've got your coolant connection. Very nice. Then that runs through here. Now I haven't actually traced the route of this yet, but basically you've got these little connectors here. And I know um, the lunatic Bruno Power especially was keen to know how this works. So you basically just got little connectors. Uh, it's not gonna focus, is it? Where's AVE with his focus, you fuck? Anyhow. Just little connectors that snap on over the ends of the packs here, of the modules, sorry. So you've got your in and your out for the coolant and it through there, off it goes, beautiful. And every single module has got that in it, down both sides. I'm wondering if I'm gonna be able to get those pipes out because there, yeah. I think all of this is really worthwhile just to have kicking about. Um, get rid of that. And then each one of them's got the little BMS connection as well. I'll probably talk a little bit more about the BMS when I'm showing you a module, because all the modules I've taken off site, they've gone, they've gone to my workshop, not my friend's workshop, because they're cool. So yeah, all the BMS comes back to here. Um, and overall, yeah, this thing is a work of art. I... This, this kind of thing makes me sad that I'm no longer doing professional engineering for anybody at the moment. But, whoa, it's good seeing what other people are doing. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a look inside of that battery. And um, if there's anything specific you want to know about it, Ask away, it might turn into a good video or it might just turn into uh, answering your question directly. Either way, stay interested people. <laughs>